war within me. Winning the dual war within me. Previous weeks when I first introduced this, we talked about our greatest enemy, right? Identifying my greatest enemy. We said that the greatest enemy to humanity is the soul. Last week we talked about true knowledge brings about boundaries. It sets the perimeters for our life. Today I'm going to conclude this. I think I'm going to conclude spiritual warfare unless the Lord say otherwise. But today I want to talk about utilizing the greatest weapon. Utilizing the greatest weapon. Say that with me. Say utilizing, utilizing the greatest weapon. The greatest weapon. I'm going to read out a bunch of different translations today, but right now I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We used this a couple of weeks ago, but I, I think it's applicable for us to bring it into today's message to kind of set the framework for where we're going. Utilizing the greatest weapon, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Reading this from the New Living Translation, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. When you have it, say, I have it. Okay, the rest of y'all will catch up. It says, now may the God of peace, I mean, know he's the God of peace. Yes. So when there's confusion and turmoil, he's not in it. May the God of peace make you holy. Now, I know King James said holy, W-H, but this says holy, H-O-L-Y. And the word holy simply means different or other. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read this, and I'm going to change holy for other. Mm -hmm. Now, may the God of peace make you different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. May the God of peace make you other. Mm -hmm. May the God of peace make you different than everything else around you. Mm -hmm. Amen. May the God of peace make you different in every way. How many ways? Yeah. Every way. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until, the, until our Lord Jesus Christ comes back or return. So the God of peace is going to make us different. In order for God to make us different, we're talking about utilizing our greatest weapon. In order for God to make us different, we got to cooperate with God. We, we've been stressing God is a gentleman. He's not going to force anything on us, but we have to yield to it. Just like we were worshiping and we were saying yes and we were saying I give myself away. In order for God to make you different, you got to yield to the process. Say the process. the process. It does not happen by osmosis. It does not just pop up and one day you're different. This is intentional and you have to yield to what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in your life. The, the, the prophet said he went down to the partner's house and he saw a piece of pottery that was marred. It was marred. It had a defect in it. And the potter put it back on the wheel and began to fashion it, but the clay was fighting the potter. Yes, yes. And he was saying that to show us a picture of our human nature, how we fight God. We don't want God to mold us into what he wants us to be. We say it, but we rebel. That's right. So if the God of peace is going to make me different, it's going to take some cooperation, it's going to take some time, and it's going to take my yieldingness to God. Yeah. Say my yieldingness to God. Yeah. And so we're trying to be made whole, spirit, soul, and body. We we're trying to be whole, or we're trying to be holy, we're trying to be different in every part of us. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. But that process comes through yieldingness to God, and understanding how God goes about doing things. When we get saved, we're, we're born again because we have repented, we have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we have made about face, we don't do the things that we usually do, but many people don't talk about sanctification. Amen. Sanctification is a process, but let me just, let me, just, just forget everything I just say. When you catch a fish and you pull him up out the water, let's just say that's salvation. The fish has been taken out of its environment, never to go back. But when you get the fish, you have the responsibility of scaling the fish. You have the responsibility of, of cutting the head off the fish, opening the fish up, getting everything out of the fish that is not usable. Sanctification is the process 
that God used to get everything out of us fishes that is not usable for his kingdom. See, salvation is instantaneously. It happened when you receive him as Lord and Savior. But, but sanctification is a process. You cannot catch a fish and clean it at the same time. So you have to make sure that the fish is in the boat. You have to make sure that the fish is in the house, the fish is in God. And once you have the fish in your possession, the fish goes through a process of being different. Different than it was before the anglers caught them or, or the fishermen, whatever you want to use, caught him. But it has to be able to go through this process to get stuff out that is not necessary so he will be beneficial or useful to the one that pulled them out. And if we never go through the process of sanctification we will never be meet for the master's use. Yeah, yeah. We'll be going through things that we went through before we got on the hook. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be chalking it up to grace instead of allowing God to take us through a process called sanctification. Yeah. Say sanctification. So I'm going to give you some tools today that will teach you how we yield to this process. We've been talking about the word being our perimeter. We've been talking about not setting our own righteousness. Well, today, say it's time to fight. It's time to fight. Because you got to fight for your mind. Yes. Because you don't want your mind to take you into areas that God has put no trespassing on. Yes. So it's time to fight to do this. Yes. And in order to do this, the mind has to be right. Say, the mind, the mind. has to be right. Go to right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. I'm going to try to stay calm, but I'm passionate about this. Because I'm on the mandate to get people to shift yes. their thinking so their life will begin to line up with the word of God. Yes. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. I'm tired of cute church. I'm tired of preachers that get more entertainment out of hooping and the organ behind them than the people growing up so they can defeat the devil. It's time for the body of Christ to arise. The Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. You can't be saying so if you're vacillating in and out of righteousness. Yes. Calm down, Apostle. Calm down. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, coming from the NLT again. We know it's the warfare chapter, Ephesians chapter 6. But something we need to pinpoint right here, it says, put on salvation. Put on salvation. Whose responsibility is it to put on salvation? Yes, salvation is available, but it's my responsibility to put it on, to wear it like a garment. Sister Terry was talking about that garment this morning. Yeah. Put on salvation as your helmet. Why did he, now he gives a bunch of different parts of the body and, and weaponry, but he said put on salvation as a helmet. The King James say put on the helmet of salvation because he know it is your mind that will cause you to trip. Yes. Yes. Amen. Your, see, your mind, he say put on the helmet of salvation or put salvation on as your helmet because your head contains a lot of stuff. Yes. Your head contains your balance. Yes. If your equilibrium gets off, if you get vertigo or something, it's in your head. Yes. How does what's in my head affect my walk? If I got vertigo, it's in my head, but it affects everything about me. And he said, put on the salvation as your helmet because he realized that it all starts with the mind. And if I can't get my mind right, then it'll throw my walk off. And I'll be saying that I'm something that I'm not because there's a disease going on in my mind that is affecting my lifestyle. And so he said, put salvation on as a helmet because salvation brings balance in your life. It'll keep you from wobbling and getting off track. See, when you see a person that say one thing and they do something else, it's something going on in the mind. Paul said, get your mind right. Put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You cannot properly appropriate the sword if you have not got your head together. That's right. uh, have you ever seen police apprehend a, a person that's seemingly insane? They just swing in or something. Well, well, your weapon will not be effective if your mind don't get right. That's right. And he said, make sure you cover your, your salvation, you cover your mind before you grab the sword and start trying to fight. Because if you don't get your mind right, you'll be fighting the wrong enemy. You'll be fighting people that's trying to help you and hurting people, you know, you'll be hurting people trying to help you and embracing people that's trying to harm you. He said, get your mind right, then pick up the word of God, that is the sword of the spirit. 
But it all starts in the mind. Say the mind. the mind. And most believers are struggling with this lifestyle is because they can't get their thinking right. Because they think that they can just go through life and eventually their thinking is going to become lined up with the word of God. And it doesn't happen like that. You have to intentionally get your mind right. That's right. So salvation deals with my head. It's amazing that we think salvation just for the whole body. Salvation is for your head. Because your head will talk you out of everything that God ever promised you. Talk you out of every relationship. Cause you to do people wrong. To burn bridges. Oh, y'all ain't no experience on that. Y'all get quiet on me like... Like what I thought the Lord was going to do. Say it starts in the mind. It starts in the mind. And he said, put on salvation as your helmet. The, the word salvation, in America, we don't do a good job of teaching people what salvation really is. We just think salvation is you ain't going to hell. Salvation is soteria in the, in the Greek. In, in a nutshell, it means nothing stripped, nothing missing. But let me give you Thayer's definition. Thayer said that it is deliverance, preservation, safety, salvation, deliverance from the molestation of enemies. In an ethical sense, that which concludes the soul's safety of salvation. In salvation, food, shelter, protection.